Red Hat, <laughs> uh, and I'm responsible for databases there, and as well in, um, interested in federal community and be involved there. And also, I'm involved in the software collections development. Uh, primarily, I'm responsible for delivering uh, databases packages for software collections, so I know uh, a bit about that. So, the idea behind the software collections, as it was said, uh, is that we want to allow users to have any version of any software on one computer, on one system, which is not possible usually, because uh, especially on the in the enterprise system, uh, there is there are a couple of challenges. Uh, like if you upgrade some version of a system, a library, for example, you break dependencies and you break stuff which actually needed the older version. And since enterprise systems are usually used for many, many years, uh, we almost uh, all the time come to situation when we need some new stuff there for new features, for testing, well, development, new stuff on the old uh, stable system. and with traditional RPM, it's really not easy. Um, what's, uh, um, what was the first idea when uh, the concept was really in the beginning was that it must be uh, built above RPM because uh, if, uh, if you will uh, consider another, oppor uh, another well, opportunities or uh, systems like now containers, it may solve uh, similar problems to you, but you won't uh, have containers in CentOS 6, 5. Uh, so this is the beauty of software collections. It's, it's uh, possible to uh, have uh, software collections or to use software collections where everywhere where you have some recent enough version of RPM, which is CentOS 5, maybe even on 4, it will be possible, but I never touched that, that version. <laughs> so the main principles of software collections. Um, the collection is really more like a connection than, uh, sorry, like a collection than uh, one package. So usually, when a collection uh, involves more packages, which is, a bit uh, special for databases because there is usually only one package, but also in the runtime, you usually run databases as a standalone daemon and you don't need much packages. But if you have some plugins, it would be also involved in one collection. But the typical, typical collection would be, for example, Python or Ruby, Ruby on Rails, and, and such stuff. So the collection is described by a meta package. Um, if you have a Python 3 uh, on CentOS 6, for example, you will probably need uh, many uh, packages in the in the that collection to actually um, satisfy dependencies of your application, which is written in Python 3. So. It's a typical feature of software collections that you bundle some necessary uh, versions of some, some uh, packages into the collection. So it, uh, it may happen that you will end up with, I don't know, boost from the system uh, version, like, like from the system, from the base system. Then you will have some newer boost library in the, for example, MariaDB collection and uh, these two versions will be installed at the same time because MariaDB wouldn't be satisfied with the uh, system version. Um, yeah, the convention about naming the uh, software collections is currently that there is a version in the name which specifies like the API compatibility or uh, for example, on the databases level, it's the major version. So the MariaDB 100 actually means 10.0. Uh, there is only the, uh, comma, uh, the uh, point uh, omitted. Um, 
So the basic feature of the software collections and that allows us to install many uh, versions on one system is that it's all installed in slash opt. Um, currently, even variable files or, or configuration files are in slash opt, but uh, in the most recent version of uh, software collections or in the future versions, it will be in the directories uh, edc opt and var opt, which is specified for that purpose uh, by file system hierarchy. Uh, then uh, uh, under the opt or after the opt, there is a specification of the vendor, which is also required by file system hierarchy. And um, f for Red Hat products or collections, it's arrange. In Fedora, it may, may be Fedora or uh, something shorter on it. In, in CentOS, it may be CentOS or we can just stay with the RH. I, I don't know if, uh, for now. Um, so to, to use and to build software collections, you will need only one package, which uh, is divided into two sub packages. The, uh, the SCL utils is the runtime part and SCL utils build is the build time. Uh, the upstream has moved recently to GitHub, so it's quite uh, easy to contribute and show what's, what's going on. And as I already mentioned, there is quite the recent version uh, 2.0, which uh, ships or offers quite nice new features. So check it out. Uh, this is an uh, example how software collection uh, meta package looks and what it contains. So there is some meta package uh, which is usually empty and it only uh, includes some requirements and handles that dependencies and actually states like the identification of the collection. So if you write yum install Postgres uh, 9.2, it will install the collection. So this is just the name. And there is a runtime package, and that's uh, the package that holds all the root under the opt uh, directory. Um, that's, that's actually just a helper to not uh, well, require that every package needs to create all the, uh, all the file system hierarchy that is usually uh, owned by file system package in, well, outside the opt, so just a helper. Uh, then there is a build sub package that is only needed uh, for building package into that particular collection. I will see it in uh, then in live demo. And this is quite important to know that uh, you shouldn't install this package on your uh, well machine directly. It should be installed only <coughs> in the mock truth because it may happen that you will see some weird RPM behavior and yeah. Uh, uh, then there is, uh, there is uh, SCL devel package and this is uh, only used for building dependent collection because collections, as I will say, uh, may depend on each other. Uh, this is how uh, uh, co uh, collection packages may look like, for example, for Postgres. So you see that every package is prefixed uh, with the collection name, and that's to that, that that's the way how it's uh, well. That's because uh, we don't need only to uh, separate the files on the build system, but we also need to separate metadata and and the packages in the repository. So we can't just uh, name the packages like usual Postgres, but we need to call it uniquely for. <coughs> uh, this is the example of uh, the content of, uh, of all the packages together. This is, uh, uh, for, for example, this is, yeah, this is example of the main server package from the, from the, from the server. And what's interesting here that uh, not every file is under opt. Uh, you see there are files in the ATC, PAMD, 
uh, in it D and etc. Uh, that's because uh, obviously some files really need to be where system ex uh, uh, expect them. So for example, the service file for system D also would be in user lib system D system directory. And these files need to be also prefixed <coughs> with the collection name to not conflict with the system wide system base uh, system package. Yeah, installing the collection is quite easy. You just uh, use yum or dnf uh, for installing the package. Uh, you specify the collection and it will install some same set of packages from the collection. Um, yeah, and, and in this example, it's, it's uh, well, five, five packages. Um, now, uh, maybe I will use first this one. Uh, this is how it's uh, used in the runtime. So we have installed the collection, and now we can and we want to run it. So the second example is how usual system uh, version is used. Without anything, we just use the system well, uh, system package. Uh, if you want to use binaries and, and uh, <coughs> stuff from the collection, we need to use this command, SCL enable, then name of the collection, and then command which we want to run. Uh, it's quite usual to run bash, and then you will have like bash uh, with already enabled uh, environment for the collection you need. Um, you can also use the services start, start, and stop. Uh, it just this is this is really the same like in the system. Uh, you just need to use proper name, and you don't need and it's not necessary to use SCL enable there because uh, all services start in the clean environment, and that comes to me to the concept how this environment actually is changed <coughs> by the SCL command. This is actually everything what this uh, SCL enable command does. It just runs this, this script. Um, it uh, adjusts system uh, environment uh, variables. And so the system prefers uh, binaries from, uh, from the collection. So that's not well, that means that the system still sees the, all, all the commands or all, all the things from the base system. But if there is a like, PSQL uh, binary in the opt, it will be preferred. So this is, for example, a uh, difference between alternatives, because alternative just uh, says, OK, we can use this version and not the other one. With system collections, we can use both, and one is actually preferred. And now it's time to live demo. Okay. So let Some me question. see. Yeah, sure. Uh, where are the configuration, uh, configuration, for example, for uh, collection PostgreSQL located? So with that, okay, so I, I, open with the system. No, uh, it, actually, it was. Uh, Mention here. Yeah, this is this is the example of the configuration uh, using the new scheme. Uh, the old scheme used opt rage until here, and here was etc, which is not uh, correctly. Uh, it's not correct uh, according to uh, file hierarchy standard. And this version or this 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 way has also some <coughs> advantages. So we can, for example, mount opt using NFS mount, and uh, then we want to have on the client this this file configurable, so writable. Mm -hmm. Okay. Will it be more consistent than, for example, for EDC also to have Red Hat slash Postgres? Uh, it's missing there. Sorry, it's it's a mistake in this uh, slide. It's, it's opt, uh, there is there is a range of uh, for sure, like here. Um, that's just missing yeah. in this, this slide. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's try some uh, 
little demo. Um, so Brian showed you how to build Python data details. And I will show you now how to make a CL uh, enabled package from this, this package. But first, I will need to set up environment. environment. <coughs> and you already heard that mock is a nice tool you should use. So I also use mock config. And I will, uh, I will build the package in mock. So let's see how the mock config file looks. Um, it's quite usual, uh, quite usual uh, config file, except there are some packages more. And that's quite important to have at least uh, a CL tools built there, because otherwise uh, the SCL macros, as you will see later, couldn't be parsed and the build would fail. Uh, then there is another one, another package uh, that actually only specifies the RPM macro to, uh, I, will, I will show content of this package later, but uh, it, it specifies actually for which collection all the packages will be built using this mock config. So shortly you will need to tweak your config file for mock for building software collections, and it will be also done in uh, the Koji for, for building uh, software collections packages. <sighs> so uh, I have downloaded uh, this package from Fedora, so I didn't need to create it from scratch. <coughs> and as you see, um, that it's usual package without any SCL magic. Um, it's pretty much similar to what uh, Brian showed. So we will continue with this. Uh, I will just rename this to be short and be fast. And there is one, one uh, tool that can be used for the beginning to when converting the package, it's called spec to SCL. Uh, sorry, I will first do a backup. Now I can use the tool. Uh, yeah, that's not what I wanted. It should be faster, but now I'm slower. <laughs> okay. So now I uh, will show how it's how the tool works. I will give it to back and create the original one. And now you will see what this tool made with the uh, spec file. So, few macros added here. Um, macros for the mac macro for the name package edit. <coughs> macros for build requires and requires, and you will see that. The macro is added here, not here, because the tool is not that clever yet. It will need some some love still. And here, uh, this is quite important to enable the collection for every well, section, for build, for install, for check. So all these sections run inside the 
environment and proper environment. So now we will have to manually correct the spec and the correction will be, well, this is not common for every package, but since we don't need to call this package with Python 3 prefix anymore, because it will, the prefix will be already covered by the collection name, I can, I can just delete this, this uh, version from the name. And <coughs> here I will yeah the same. And I will add yeah, and there is one another mistake. Uh, the teaser data it's it's a package that I want to use from the system. So I don't want any prefix here. Yeah, this seems almost correct. Uh, this one. And we should be ready. Um, so now I want to uh, build a source RPM package from this this one from this spec file. So I will run um, RPM build. I will define that the sources are in this directory. <coughs> And the source RPM is created. Uh, now I can build the package in the mock. Yeah, all the packages should be cached by mock, hopefully. Yeah, and I will stop here because uh, this is this is uh, what may be interesting that um, all the dependencies already was uh, or were well, installed correctly because we needed the, the dependencies from the collection. Um, yeah, and yeah, it's built correctly. So let's copy the result in uh, the working directory, just to be easier. And since I don't have any uh, virtual machine with CentOS right now, I will use the mock as a like lightweight virtual machine. I will show you how it works in the in the mock itself. So. Um, I will install, well, there is already built root prepared for the uh, package build, but I will install also system Python there. So you will see the difference. And I will also install the just build package. Yeah, and I will first need to install the collection there because I'm not sure if it's uh, if it stayed from the uh, if it stayed there from the build process. So rather be sure to install the collection.
Oh, I hope the cache didn't expire. Expired. <laughs> okay, but uh, so we can wait a bit, and I, I can show you some. Uh, yeah. So does it work? Okay, so I will do it differently. Uh, I try to be prepared for this case, for this scenario. So I have some backup here in uh, packages directory. So I will just need to name all these uh, packages there. So it will be the Python base package. It will be the interpret itself. Um, <coughs> ah, right. This is wrong. And we'll see what is missing. So, yeah, Jinja. Okay. Let it. It's here. Those. And simple JSON. <coughs> and things. Pigments, yeah. So why not install all? Okay, this is the yeah live demo. Uh, I <coughs> should expect that. Okay, so let's let's wait a bit, uh, and I will show you the next thing that I wanted to show you. It's how the meta package looks. Uh, it's actually what I wanted to show you was that this this build sub package of the. Uh, it's really, uh, really simple. It only includes one file. Yeah, this is this is just extracted uh, source RPM. Uh, sorry, extracted RPM. And usually, in in this file, is only name of the uh, software collection. But you will see, you see that packaging um, dynamic language like Python is quite. Um, Non easy because you need to uh, solve all the uh, things like automatic requires provides and yeah it, it's quite common that packaging the software collection becomes a nightmare uh, <laughs> but unless you you maintain some dynamic language it, it's it's uh, much easier so how it's Working here, yeah. So the, the internet is slower than I thought. Um, so I will just continue the presentation because there is not much time. Um, yeah. So, as I said, uh, packaging the dynamic uh, languages is much harder. Um, you need to uh, define all the macros like 
Python site lib, which uh, usual Python packages use. You need to define it correctly and also solve the uh, requires and provides generators. Um, this is also the example how a parallel uh, meta package can, can look like. Like the, there is some specification of the provides uh, generator and macros for that. So it really uh, needs some RPM skills to package uh, a collection like Perl. Um, what is uh, also quite special is uh, packaging the demons. Because as I, as I <coughs> said, uh, there are some quite a few uh, files uh, located uh, outside the opt. And also, we need to ensure that even in the clean environment, the daemon starts properly. So what we do here is that we use like sourcing. Well, this is this is sourcing the enable scriptlet as you saw it uh, before. This is used in the init script. This is used in the uh, systemd unit file. Um, yeah, and it just just uh, enables the proper environment for the daemon process. Um, we also need to solve uh, the Selenox, so we use this feature, uh, like equality or how it's called, that says that everything which is in opt root and SCL name is the same like it would be in the, the root directory uh, in terms of Selenox context. So if I have here um, slash bin, whatever, post postmaster, it will use the same context as if, if it would be in user bin postmaster. Is this executed in the post? The one you have yes, yes, this is exhibited in the post. There is one light problem with uh, RPM in CentOS 6 that we can't define uh, the Selenox context and use uh, the Selenox console or let the RPM apply the same uh, just uh, defined context in the same transaction. Uh, because RPM just uh, used the context which was before the transaction. So it may happen that you will uh, define the context properly, but unless you run also restorecon in the postscript, uh, it may happen that you want to get the context you wanted. And I already mentioned that it's possible to extend, uh, to, to uh, make a dependency between two collections. Um, this is the actually one way how to extend some collection, like that we create another collection that uh, requires the previous one to exist. And also, uh, in case one collection is enabled, the, the dependency collection also be uh, enabled. So this is quite easy to do in the enable scriptlet like this. Um, and in this link, you will see how, for example, Python collection can be extended in the proper way. It's also not that easy uh, because you will need to use all the Python site lib uh, macros properly. But uh, this is nice article and will show how it's done properly. Another thing how to extend the collection or existing collection is what we actually did. We just created another package into the collection and we were safe. Um, just to compare these two um, ways how to extend collection, if you want to ship the collection out or just provide outside, it's better to use the access uh, to, to uh, create a new collection which is depending uh, rather than create packages to the previous collection. Uh, it's just because it's it's cleaner uh, cleaner way how you could. Just say, uh, yeah, this is this. These packages are like above the original, con um, the other original col uh, collection, um, and it's because uh, we need to see the collection like a repository. Like, if you want to extend your CentOS repository, you also don't ship a package in the CentOS repository, but you rather create a new repository that. Um, well, like extend the original one. Okay, but where is CentOS? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
So the collection, software collection concept uh, has been here for, for a while already, but the community about, around it, um, well, is still kind of missing. It's because uh, we started to think about community developed around Fedora, like it's done um, in the base system. Um, but uh, it seems like Fedora isn't very friendly, or no, no, sorry, uh, I, want, <laughs> I didn't want to say friendly, but uh, it isn't very fast to adopt SCLs. There is center, center um, um, well, th there is center um, use case for collection, but not that uh, clear like in CentOS, where we have quite um, old packages in the base system and even some new, new uh, versions. In Fedora, on the other hand, um, there are quite new <coughs> new versions all the time. But sometimes we can need um, all the versions of some stack, so that that's where the collections fit in Fedora. But as I said, there, there is no such pressure on this uh, technology there. So it seems much better to start the community around the software collections in CentOS. So. This is why CentOS Special Interest Group was established this, uh, no, sorry, not this year, last year, but like in the, in the uh, late last year. And right now we are almost ready to build collections there. And uh, just, just the small tweaks need to be done through the tools that was already mentioned uh, here today. Yeah, and this is this is how um, the workflow could look uh, in the in the future, that everybody could become a member if if he is interested in a software collection. He would be able to contribute uh, into the Git CentOS org, like the Git, the Git repositories and the CentOS, and uh, there might be some testing. Uh, repository like the naming uh, the namespace for testing repositories uh, yeah and then from these testing repositories move to the official uh, SCL repositories uh, which will be signed and uh, well the proper one okay I may look if the live demo, okay. So the live, yeah, some five, ten minutes. So it seems it's installed now, and I need just to install, just build package. Um, so it's already installed because I had it on in the uh, in the directory as well. So let's see how it works. <laughs> so now, if I run, I'm, I'm in the mock truth. So let's let's uh, take let's look at it like a small virtual machine uh, with CentOS seven. Uh, if I run just Python. I have Python 2.7. If I want to run Python 3 there, I just say SCL, enable uh, Python 3.3 and Python. And you see I have Python 3.3.2 running. I can do import uh, the module we just created. Yeah, and I can try what something some some comment you will see that it really works actually uh, that one yeah so so you, you see that we extended the python free free collection of new package and yeah that's it so if you want to join the SEO collection Movement and and uh, become uh, of the apps, uh, of the community. There is a mailing list. Uh, 
sick page, wiki pages and quite nice uh, guide how to create new collections on the software collections org uh, page which is like main page for the technology itself and you will see you will also um, find some already built collections on this page of software collections org which are currently built in copper in Fedora Copper instance, uh, but there are also uh, builds for CentOS 6 and 7. So, any questions? Are there any CentOS builds for the Red Hat software collections? This is what can be found in the software collections.org. There are th these, these particular collections built for CentOS 6 and 7 there. there are the the same version um, currently there may be some latest fixes missing but uh, usually we can well in, in after um, after releasing it uh, may well it may take few weeks uh, to rebuild them for the software collections org so yeah, it's it's not up to date right now, I guess, but uh, it should be really soon. We will welcome a contributor to do that uh, with the building system. If people are up to it, we, uh, this is something we want to look into mm -hmm. to rebuild exactly what was achieved. Mm -hmm. But uh, we need more people at this time. It's it's uh, it's starting. So if you feel like. Uh, Doing some software collection. Yeah, right. but it's not as simple as, as simply rebuilding no. in a mock or because the Red Source mm -hmm. also It's uses not that simple because there's maybe some uh, dependencies that are not published. I don't know if it's still the case. No, for for the recent version, like for software collections uh, one point two, uh, it should be all everything uh, available for the building. You should make that now, right? Yeah, now now there is also Maven, right? Yeah, so the, 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 in the past there were issues, and I think no, nobody from us had time to send all the package again. And uh, Koji, we didn't create all software collection as well, so we were waiting a bit on the Git uh, layout and to see um, more people involved to see how it goes. <coughs> but uh, it's definitely if we have enough effort, uh, in, enough people that uh, ask for it, and we have time, we will try to do it. I think. Does Software Collections also receive uh, security support from Red Hat? Or? Yes, yes it does. Yeah. Okay, so thank you. <laughs>